They buried millions of trees in sand so hot it could melt plastic. The world called them insane. A decade later, satellite images revealed something that defied every prediction and changed the field of desert science forever. By the year 2000, China faced an environmental catastrophe that most nations would surrender to. Over 27% of the country, nearly 3 million square kilometers, had become barren wasteland. Every spring, apocalyptic dust storms would erupt from the Gobi and Taklamakan deserts, blackening skies across Beijing, Seoul, and even reaching as far as North America. These weren't ordinary storms. Some carried over 300,000 tons of sand in a single event. Grounding flights, hospitalizing thousands, and coating entire cities in toxic yellow haze. But the visible chaos was just the surface. Beneath it, something far more terrifying was happening. The deserts weren't just sitting there. They were advancing. Like a slow-motion tsunami made of sand, the Taklamakan Desert expanded at a rate of nearly 1,300 square kilometers per year. Villages that had stood for centuries vanished beneath dunes overnight. Farmers watched helplessly as their fields turned to dust. By the 1990s, over 400 million people, more than the entire population of the United States, lived under the constant threat of desertification. The cause wasn't mysterious. Decades of overgrazing had stripped away protective vegetation. Industrial-scale deforestation eliminated natural windbreaks. Unsustainable farming practices depleted soil nutrients, turning fertile land into powder. Climate change accelerated everything, creating a feedback loop of devastation. Scientists projected that without intervention, northern China would become uninhabitable within 50 years. The government faced an impossible choice. Attempt the largest ecological restoration in human history, or watch their nation slowly suffocate under advancing sand. In 1978, China launched what would become the world's most audacious environmental project, the Three North Shelter Forest Program, later known as the Great Green Wall. The goal seemed absurd. Create a living barrier of trees spanning 4,500 kilometers across northern China. That's roughly the distance from New York to London. The timeline? 75 years, with completion targeted for 2050. But here's what made it truly insane. They planned to plant these forests in regions where annual rainfall barely reached 100 millimeters, less than the Sahara Desert in some areas. Summer temperatures exceeded 50 degrees C. Winter brought sub-zero freezes. The soil contained almost no organic matter. Winds reached hurricane strength. Environmental scientists worldwide were unanimous. It couldn't work. Even if they managed to plant trees, survival rates would be catastrophic. The project would waste billions while achieving nothing. China planted them anyway. At first, the critics were right. Thousands of saplings were planted, but 90% withered within weeks. Some species even worsened erosion with shallow roots. Photographs from the early 2000s showed graveyards of dead. Trees. Billions of yuan wasted. Observers. Condemned it as ecological vandalism. Warning that poorly... Planned monocultures could collapse under disease, disrupt water cycles, and cause more harm than desserts themselves. Yet amid the failures, scattered green patches survived. Sites where local teams tried new methods, blending indigenous knowledge with adaptive strategies. What followed would rewrite the rules of desert restoration. China's breakthrough came by abandoning Western reforestation models and working with the desert instead of against it. Engineers pioneered a checkerboard sand-fixing method, laying straw and brush in one-meter grids that cut ground-level wind by 60%, trapped moisture, and gave seedlings a chance to grow. They turned to native survivors. Sea buckthorn with 15-meter roots, saxol trees thriving on dew, and desert poplars resistant to salinity. These weren't ornaments. They were built for survival. By blending farming with forestry, locals could grow drought-resistant crops between tree rows, turning sustainability into a livelihood. For the first time, communities had a direct stake in protecting the green barrier, and that made the project last. By 2010, the project entered its tech-driven phase.
Drones with seed launchers could plant 100,000 trees a day, work that once took hundreds of laborers. Satellites tracked every hectare, while AI analyzed soil, moisture, and weather to fine-tune planting. The real breakthrough was biological. Scientists introduced mycorrhizal fungi that bonded with tree roots, boosting nutrient uptake and raising survival rates from under 20% to over 85%. Water management was reinvented. Subsurface drip systems minimized evaporation. Fog nets harvested moisture, and artificial oases reshaped microclimates. With these advances, desert transformation began to accelerate at an unprecedented speed. By 2024, China had afforested over 30 million hectares, an area larger than Italy. Forest cover in impacted regions rose from 10% to more than 25% while severe dust storms in Beijing fell by 70%. Air quality across northern China saw measurable improvement. In 2022, a 3,000-kilometer greenbelt was completed around the Taklamakan Desert. Satellite images revealed forests pushing into barren terrain, reviving villages, rivers, and wildlife long thought lost. The economic shift was just as dramatic. Ecotourism surged. Sustainable farming created millions of jobs, and once barren lands now produced crops and medicinal plants for global markets. Communities displaced by desertification returned, rebuilding their futures in restored landscapes. China's success reshaped global views on restoration, proving even the harshest ecosystems can recover with patience and adaptive management. Lessons from the Great Green Wall now guide efforts from Africa's Sahel to Australia's deserts. The project also showed that ecology and economy can thrive together. When communities share benefits, conservation becomes self-sustaining. This model inspired green initiatives from India to Africa's planned Trans-Saharan Belt. Perhaps most importantly, it shifted the narrative. Instead of endless stories of decline, China offered rare proof that humanity can reverse ecological damage on a continental scale through persistence and innovation. Yet the story isn't finished. Climate change continues to accelerate desertification in vulnerable regions. Maintaining the Great Green Wall requires constant effort, monitoring, replanting, and adapting to shifting conditions. China aims to expand green coverage by another 137,000 square kilometers by 2050, pushing deeper into the harshest desert cores. The lessons learned Combining traditional ecological knowledge with cutting-edge technology, prioritizing native species, creating economic incentives for conservation, now form the blueprint for humanity's response to global desertification. What began as a plan the world mocked has become the template for planetary ecological restoration. Sometimes the craziest ideas transform everything. If this story amazed you, You'll love discovering more incredible engineering projects reshaping our planet. Subscribe to Mystery Folder for more mind-blowing documentaries that reveal the hidden forces transforming our world. The next story is already waiting for you.